published on January 29th, 1929. Eric Maria remarks all quiet on the Western Front became a poignant reminder of the sobering reality and tragedy that scarred a generation a decade before. A fictional story inspired by his own experience fighting in the trenches of the Western Front during the Great War, the book became an international hit, then in turn sprouted several adaptations throughout the years, thus leading us to its most recent incarnation, the Edward Berger-led German production of All Quiet on the Western Front, a 2022 release featuring a debutante in the starring role, a worldwide distribution through Netflix, and the big budget to boot. What do we have here? Some darker clouds. Not expecting any rain on this Friday evening, but yeah, that looks rather menacing. I'm guessing it's a bit of a lake breeze perhaps set up. 24 degrees, winds from the southeast now at 17 kilometers per hour. Here's your forecast as we go through the day tomorrow. If you had any uncertainty on how the movie would tackle the war, it will become immediately evident from the opening sequence. This is very much in line with the novel, displaying the ugliness and futility that would come to define the conflict. It's very much an anti-war film, foregoing the heroics such as seen in San Mendes' excellent 1917 for a film that paints you an honest picture of the tragedy that befell the soldiers on both ends of the battered wasteland. And honesty, or lack of it, is front and center as we watch Paul, played by Felix Kammerer, enlist in the Imperial German Army with his classmates, barely young men who were spoon-fed notions of grandeur and honor via the mouths of their superiors. It's through this blind nationalism that the movie, and book by extension, represents the ingredients required to keep the conveyor belt of the war machine turning. And these themes are ever present, like a brushstroke laid over top of every scene, it leaves a tinge of sadness, felt even in the moments of brief levity. Handled incorrectly, it can spoil the film, but the tone never felt heavy-handed, even when accentuated by the musical score, a duty that Volker Welterman duly aced. Using a combination of contemporary classical signatures with machine-like drones, the musical score is used with great effect to infuse uncertainty, anxiety, and an almost otherworldliness to the events on screen. It's fitting, considering the First World War was a clash between 19th century tactics and 20th century mechanization. The resulting landscape that Paul and the other soldiers like him witness was as alien as it could get. But praise must also be given to the cinematography and editing, which were notably effective when portraying moments of rising tension and all-out war. It's in these scenes that the movie is firing at four cylinders, but it's ultimately the actors that function as the conduit funneling the emotions prescribed by the script. As a whole, the cast gives a memorable performance, but it's on the shoulders of Felix and Albrecht Schuck, playing Powell and Katz respectively, that the movie's emotional journey is fully realized. Paul, the young recruit whose romantic notions of war is quickly swept away, and Kat, as the elder and mentor, strike a friendship representing the humanity that still lingers even during the worst of times. It provides a stake, something that can be lost, and for that, all the more precious to both the characters and the viewer that's fully bought in. And I'll once again point out that this is Felix's first role in a movie, having worked in theater until now which makes it even more impressive that he was able to shoulder such a responsibility. In an attempt to avoid bogging you down with too many details, I'll quickly state that the movie is quite good. There's an additional plotline not found in the book that follows an excellent Daniel Bruhl as the German politician Matthias Erzberger. 
note, this adds to a runtime that pushes into 140 minutes, so unless you're enjoying the experience, you may find the political intrigue, well, not so intriguing. But the editing, as I mentioned earlier, is quite superb. And these moments away from the trenches are woven in to accentuate the striking division between the soldiers in the front lines and the elites pushing the pawns across the board. But given the heavy subject matter and tone of the film, it's not something I'll find myself watching unless I'm in the right mindset. Your mileage may vary. It's nonetheless a very impressive film, and one that captivated me long after the credits. And that, perhaps, is the point. Thank you for watching.